My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate World Mission Sunday. It is a time in which the church recognizes the mission that it has been entrusted with, a mission of service to bring to those who have never heard the good news, the good news that Jesus is alive, that Jesus has died for us, has taken on the guilt of our sins, taken on himself every single thing that we could possibly ever be guilty of, and he has died for us. In his passion, he took upon himself every sin that had ever been committed and every sin that would ever be committed, and he died as one innocent. This is his great service toward us. This is the good news that we do not have to save ourselves, thanks be to God, that we do not have to make ourselves worthy, though we are asked to participate in what he does. It is not that he is waiting for us to be worthy. If Jesus was waiting for us to be worthy to die for us, he'd still be waiting, right? Yes or yes? I'm not giving you any choices today. It's either yes or yes. But this is good news. This is very good news. The other day I was at a conference. I heard the testimony of a man who was an atheist, meaning no faith in God, not even agnostic. No faith in God. He was a meth user. He was in the hospital dying because his organs were failing on him. And basically the doctor said, there's nothing we can do for you. We're just going to try and give you as many meds as we can to help you. But the meds weren't touching the pain. Until suddenly a ray of light comes into his hospital room. And a man walks into his room through that ray of light in a white gown. He didn't know who the guy was because he was an atheist, right? Okay. And as the guy walks into the room, the guy begins, the guy in the bed begins to shake because something has entered his room that he had not ever encountered before. The man in the robe sat down in the middle of the hospital room and waited. And suddenly, William, the guy in the bed, the meth user, who's a meth user no more, sees something break through the wall and sees a river of water flow into his room. And the man in the white gown begins to dip his hands into that water. And a voice comes to William in the bed and says, it wasn't the man in the robe, but just a voice that says, if you will accept Jesus, you can have life from this water. So, knowing that it's either that or he's going to die, William decides to accept Jesus, and he continues to shake. Next thing he knows, the guy disappears. Later, the doctors run some tests, And then they come back and run some more tests. And they come back and run some more tests. And they say, William, we don't understand. Um, Whereas you were in total organ failure, now there's nothing wrong. And it doesn't even look as if you had ever used drugs. The Son of Man has come to serve and to save what is lost. That's his mission. It's also our mission. It is our mission. The very thing that we are here gathered at, we call Mass. Why? Because it comes from the Latin Misa. Right? At the end of the old Latin Mass, for those of you still old enough to remember, you might remember the words of the priest. He would say, Ite, Misa est. Go, you guys. Go, y'all. As we would say in the South, y'all go now. It's a mission. It's ascending. Misa means ascending. Literally, the Mass we have named after what it's supposed to do. It is a commissioning. And when you've been commissioned, you've been given authority. You have been given power. You have been renewed. You have been sent like a missile 
Not to bring destruction, but to bring the fire of heaven. But there's a shift that has to happen in our thinking. Just like James and John had to understand something. They had to understand that the kind of glory that they were looking for without the cross wasn't possible unless they were willing to embrace the cross. But once they embraced the cross, they could have the glory as well. But notice this. John, the beloved disciple, did he ever die? Yes. How? Natural causes. Right? Did he die the same way Jesus did in terms of being killed for the faith? No. They say that he was tortured a bit by some officials. This is part of the story of the church, right? Part of our heritage of passing on the stories of our ancestors in the faith, just like we've got family stories in our families, right? So he suffered for the faith, but he didn't have to die the way Jesus did. Why? Because Jesus already did it. We hear this first reading, and we can get confused. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. Who? Jesus, right? Does this mean that God the Father was sadistic? No. Because Jesus was willingly saying, I will stand in the place of sinners out of my great love for them. That is the love of God the Father as well. Because Jesus became man in order to show us visibly and tangibly the great depths of love that God has for us. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, which he did, he shall see his descendants in a long life, spiritually and God willing also physically. And the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Who is this talking about? Who? Come on. Multiple choice. Buddha? No? Okay. Muhammad? No. Who? Jesus? Is it Jesus? Okay. Is that your final answer? Okay. Good. You, you won the prize. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light and fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Now, hopefully we trust that. Because if we don't, sometimes we can have a mentality that says that if we have gotten ourselves into trouble for whatever reason, if there's something going on, that we have to bear that still, that it's our fault. You know who likes to really get us with that one is the devil. He likes to say, it's your fault. You did it. You got yourself in trouble. Well, hold on a second. Jesus didn't mind dying for us when it was our fault anyway, right? Yes or yes? Yes, good. So is he going to have a problem with helping us if we have gotten ourselves into trouble? No, he's not. Why? Because he loves us. He's not an enabler. He's an empowerer. To enable somebody is to basically keep them trapped in their own devices, right? But an empowerer is one who's able to free one from their devices, from their vices, and transform them. And that's Jesus. That's who Jesus is. This is the life that he literally gives to us again. He doesn't die for us again on the cross at this Mass. Literally what he does is he lets heaven get cracked open so that the eternity of heaven right, opens up here in our world so that the moment of Calvary can also be present here again. Because, you know, in heaven there is no time. God is present to all time and eternity. So that's why what we, what we experience invisibly at this Mass is Jesus, the Lamb who was slain, standing again on the altar, as it says in the book of Revelation. Read it if you want. It's a little trippy. Good thing it says, blessed are those who read these words, not those who understand them, right? But it's literally pointing out something that's beyond our description that we experience here. We just don't realize that we experience. But when we begin to realize we experience it, we can begin to say yes to it all the more, partner with what God is doing, and allow God to have answers beyond what we are used to. Just like the man William that I met at this conference. Talk about something amazing. 
And God will do that sometimes for individuals, right? In order to be a sign for others to have faith of what God is able to do. Are we or are we not facing an epidemic in our society of an opioid crisis? Yes or no? Well, I gave you a choice on that one, didn't I? But you guys have, have been paying attention. Have we or have we not felt helpless? Yes or no? Yes, we have. It's important that we admit that. It's important. Do you know why? Because the answers to the problems of today's world are not for us to figure out. If it were for us to figure out, we'd be left to what we are able to do on our own. But God has never asked us to do that on our own. This is why sometimes when we hear that call to serve, we're like, well, what can I do? I'm XYZ. I have fallen into these things. I've got these problems, so I can't really speak about anything. We, we feel like we have to be silenced sometimes because of the fact that we know ourselves. And guess who wants us to be silent, by the way? Not God, the devil. He wants us to be silent because he wants to silence the word that can save people from the bondage that he has put them in. Bondage to pornography. Bondage to sexual addictions. Sexual perversions. Bondage to an ideology of the expendability of human life and abortion. Or the death penalty. Or euthanasia. Bondage to lies that rob us of the life that Jesus died for us to experience. It says in John 10.10 that the thief, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We've been seeing a lot of that, haven't we? And he says, but I have come that they may have life and have it in abundance. So one of the things that has to happen is we literally have to have this shift. Because sometimes we can think that we're supposed to be like Job. That we as a society are supposed to, quote-unquote, take up our cross of suffering, right, and just suffer it until Jesus comes again and saves everybody. Rushes in like Superman on the last day and raises everybody up, Right? As if our hope is only supposed to be in going to heaven. Don't get me wrong, we have a lot of hope in going to heaven. But the Lord might want to do something more. Because even Job, in his suffering, there was a time when the suffering stopped. And God blessed him seven times over what he had experienced previous to losing everything. So we want to be like Job. We want to see that breakthrough of blessing. But we also want to make sure that something's very clear. St. John Paul II talked to us about this idea of the redemptive suffering, right? That when we are experiencing evil, whether it's sickness or some kind of disease or some kind of a situation going on that is evil, that causes suffering, he says in his teaching that it is quite right that we seek a remedy for that. Whether that be through medicine, whether that be through prayer, it is right because it is right for us to want to be delivered from evil. Do we not say that every time we come to Mass? Deliver us from evil. And deliver us specifically from the evil one, right? So the two go together. Because remember, all of the issues that come into the world are a result of sin, and who instigated the world to sin? Who instigated humanity to sin? The devil. Right? So we want to be able to say, devil bad, God good, right? Sickness and societal ills are bad, right? God good, healing good, right? Harmony in society, good, right? Who can give us those things? The devil? No. Ourselves? No, we got ourselves into a big mess when we're trying to do it on our own. How about God? How about God? But as I was saying, sometimes we can be in this situation where we're saying, God, look at all my problems. What can I do? And if we say that, we'd be just like Isaiah. Isaiah, in the beginning of his book, in the beginning of Isaiah, chapter 6, Isaiah has an encounter with God. He literally sees the heavens open, and God is there on the throne, and there's angels ministering, and Isaiah knows nothing impure can come into the presence of God, and here he is, and, he's, and he knows. He knows himself. 
He knows how he is. He says to God, God, I am a man of unclean lips in a generation of unclean lips. So not only do I have a problem, but I know that even if I were to try to stop, I am surrounded by bad example that's going to continue to have me be a man of unpure lips. He just cries out to God. And what does God do? God instructs one of the seraphim, one of the angels, to grab a burning hot coal by the altar of God The angel goes to Isaiah, touches his lips with this burning hot coal. I don't know what Isaiah experienced. It might have been painful. Right? Because it's a burning hot coal from heaven. So there might have been some pain involved. The angel says, Behold, this has touched your lips. It will free you from all sin. And I want to submit, brothers and sisters, this. That if we are willing to tell God our problems, He is willing to purify us of them. If we are willing to stop saying, Okay, God, this is my problem, have mercy on me so I can try to fix myself again and again and again and again and again, which ends up doing what? Frustrating the heck out of us, right? Yes or yes? But the, 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 the very holiness of life that we are looking for, brothers and sisters, are fruits of the Holy Spirit, not fruits of us, not fruits of our own labor. We just got to be the receptive soil to what God wants to do in us. And guess what? God's also the farmer, so he can also till the soil. I hear he can turn stones into good soil, you know, because he created stone. He also created soil, right? So if we got some stones in our hearts, he can take care of those. He can turn them into hearts of flesh, right? Because he's God, right? What we receive at this Mass is not a coal from the altar of God. It's greater than that. What we receive at this Mass is Jesus himself. Body, blood, soul, and divinity. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Consubstantial, that is one in being with God the Father. And one in being with God the Holy Spirit, right? And if God can't fix us, who can If God can't purify us, who can? So we want to decide today, can God fix us? Yes. Now this is important because if God can fix us, and we're willing to say, yes, Lord, fix us, then God can also work with us to partner with him to fix society, to be sent on mission. It's literally what Isaiah was experiencing in his call. First, he sees that he's not good enough God purifies him. Then God says, who will go for me? Whom can I send? And Isaiah says, here I am, send me. Because now he has seen the power of God at work in his own life. He knows that God can bring power at work in the lives of others. Just like the guy William who was giving the testimony at the conference that I was just at. Who has seen people completely delivered from drugs because he saw God do it in his own life. Just praying for them. They didn't have to have the same experience that he did. Because he just knew that the Holy Spirit in him could do it in somebody else. Because it's the Holy Spirit. It's kind of simple reasoning, isn't it? God has the answers. We just have to listen. Kind of simple answers. Simple reasoning, right? So for us, the willingness no longer to want to be in charge. Because James and John, they want to be in charge. They want to be, you know, they want greatness. And Jesus does not rebuke them for wanting greatness. He does not rebuke them for having desires. Because we should have desires for goodness, for greatness. We should have desires to want to transform society, not according to our own thinking, because we'll just ruin it more, but according to God's understanding. Many years ago, there was a woman who'd gone to the same conference that I had gone to, right? And when she went, God didn't necessarily heal her of anything because she didn't really have any problems. But a couple of weeks later, God gave her an idea for how to get an electrical source of light and radio to people who were in disaster situations, and so she began basically to, to, to research this. She began in, in a business, you know, to start this issue. And now, now, from what I understand, whenever there's a disaster, FEMA will literally buy her LED light sources 
for the people. And by the way, you can also charge your cell phone on it, which is very important because that's the main source of communication. It can be recharged through solar lighting. Wonderful idea from God. And she wasn't an MIT grad. She hadn't studied mechanical engineering or anything like that. She had some people help her out. She had the idea that God gave her. So today, we ask the Lord to get us ready for mission. It's World Mission Sunday. We do pray for those who are already out there, whether they be priests, nuns, or other laity that are out spreading the gospel directly, right, through telling other people about God. But we also pray, too, that God might get us ready for mission, that we begin to trust in him and what Jesus did for us on the cross, that Jesus might want to bring not just healing to our individual lives, not just healing to our individual bodies, not just healing to our souls, not just healing for our sins, but literally healing of the world, healing of our society. To bring his peace, not just to us, but to extend that peace slowly but surely in these concentric circles, right? We'll start with Poughkeepsie, Wappingers Falls area, right? And we'll go into Dutchess County, right? And peace for the entire state of New York, right? And then maybe the Northeast. And if there are other people doing that in other areas, we won't be alone, thanks be to God, right? And the Lord can literally establish his kingdom here. To show us what's possible. And so we pray. God, we thank you for the great gift that you gave to us in Jesus' death on the cross for us. That we would not have to make ourselves perfect, but that he would be the one to bear our guilt. To bear our infirmity. And so, Father God, we just put our trust again in what Jesus has done. We let him, as he shows himself to us today in the Eucharist. We give him permission to reveal to us what might be wrong with us. (coughs) Just as you did with Isaiah. But we also ask, Father, that you might give us that confidence that you're not just going to show us what's wrong with us. You're also going to show us what you're going to do to bring healing to us. So, Father, in, in that, we then ask also that you give us your ideas. Your ideas for how to answer the problems of today's world, the opioid crisis, our division in the political realm of hatred and violence, issues of family and commitment, issues of people not understanding the goodness of the human person, the goodness of sexuality, the goodness of gender, man and woman, their complementarity. We ask that you begin to download these answers to us and inspire us in the ways that we need to walk so that we can serve your people just as Jesus came to serve us. Amen.